Henry's first contact with the Hitler Youth came in the summer of 33. Like many of his friends, he'd joined a youth club, the Church Scouts. They met at the parish hall for songs and competitions. But one day, they turned up to find Hitler Youth Boys there to teach them drill. Henry was secretly delighted, but telling his father wasn't easy. He hadn't wanted me and the Scouts in the first place, a Christian youth organization. He was a down-to-earth working man and didn't want his only son brainwashed by anyone. But to see me sucked up into the Hitler Youth, that really hurt him. And when I told him... You must buy me a uniform. They told me to tell you. A brown shirt before the next meeting. <laughs> he just laughed. He said... Know how a bull hates a red rag when it's waved in front of it? Well, that's what a brown rag does to me. I will never waste good money on a brown shirt for my boy. So what do I tell them? Tell them! Tell them on my pay. If I spend my money on a brown shirt, then we don't eat. They'll just have to accept that. And they did accept it, grudgingly. But at the next Hitler Youth meeting, they made me step forward. And I was given a parcel, which I was not to open, but to take home and hand to my parents. Fritz, look. Two brown shirts for the boy, with the compliments of the party. Good. Good? What's good? Because a shirt is a shirt. So what if it's brown? It's material I won't have to buy and sew. It's good quality, too. He can put his elbows on the table, and it won't wear through. I simply loved it in the Hitler Youth. The uniform was so smashing. The dark brown, the black, the swastika. I loved marching, the flag before us, a drum beating the pace. Most roads in Germany at that time had cobbles. It was painful on our feet, but that didn't matter. We felt important. The police had to stop traffic to give us right of way, and passers-by had to salute to respect our flag. I remember how funny it sometimes was with the old ladies with their shopping bags shooting their arms into the air. As with many German children, the Hitler Youth became the single most important influence in Henry's life. His group met after school and all day Saturday. Plenty of sport with the emphasis on teamwork and training in useful skills. Signaling, fixing bikes, collecting waste and scrap metal. But the most important lesson was in Nazi theory. Learning to love Hitler. It was as if we had created our own atmosphere the atmosphere of the young, the coming German generation. After all, as the Führer had written, Germany's future belonged to its youth. I told father that. He replied somewhat crushingly. That's like saying the grass is green. As his father knew, Henry was being indoctrinated, his head filled with propaganda, Nazi lies, or half-truths endlessly repeated. For adults, spotting propaganda was hard enough. For the young, it was almost impossible. I remember one day I came home from school and said to my mother, You know, Mama, I don't think it's right that Dr. Bergman touches me anymore. Dr. Bergman was our family doctor. Of course, straight away, my mother jumped to the wrong conclusion. What did he do? Oh, no. He treated me well. He's a very kind man. Well, what then? It's just... I don't think it's right that German boys should be touched by a Jew. She was horrified that I should say such a stupid, wicked thing. In my defence, I explained how that very day, 
A man in a brown uniform had told our class in school how we should keep the race pure and how he'd been very proud of me because I had said, I know, why don't we throw all the Jews out of Germany? Like this was some brilliant solution to Germany's problems. But my mother wasn't impressed. All she wanted to know was... Dr. Bergman, did you mention Dr. Bergman to this man that he touched you? Yes, Mama. But I did say I didn't think Dr. Bergman was a bad man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's all she said. This story, so typical in Nazi Germany, shows how easily young minds took on board dangerous ideas. Schools have been Nazified. Anti-Nazi teachers sacked, textbooks rewritten. Nazi race science was taught in the classroom. Jewish students had separate desks, then separate schools. By 42, they could get no formal education at all. Meanwhile, children like Henry were being taught how to spot the Jewish enemy. They told me that because of the German blood in my veins, I was a superior human being. I never dreamt of asking what German blood really was. Old history textbooks were destroyed. Those that replaced them taught children the Nazi version of Germany's past and future. We learned about Lebensraum, living space, how glorious it would be to fight Poland and Russia, to conquer land for Germany. We learned about battles and wars and kings, how if we stuck together and weren't stabbed in the back like last time, we could not lose. Deutschland, Deutschland, über alles, Germany above everything. And I lapped it all up. It just upset me that my father was so scornful. Balderdash. But what was I to do? Was I to say to my teachers, it's all balderdash? I shouldn't believe what they teach me at school. Is that what you're saying? Not to believe my teachers? All right, young man. Some of the things they teach you, believe. This pencil, when I drop it, the Nazis cannot change gravity, but just use your head. If it sounds like opinion, say to yourself, whose opinion is it? Two plus two equals four. That's fine. That's all right. But even two plus two could brainwash. Maths books taught angles by plotting the paths of falling bombs. Adding sums meant working out the money saved if Germany got rid of its invalids. For me, it was all very confusing. Everything I heard at home was the opposite of what they taught me at school and in the Hitler Youth. And it bothered me a great deal. I wanted my loved ones to be right, but I also loved Germany, my fatherland. And I firmly believed that our Führer was giving us back our dignity. I used to get so angry. All right, I'll tell them tomorrow. They're just teaching us lies. No, Henry. Promise me, Junger, you will never repeat what we say to you outside these four walls. Do you promise? Of course, I kept my promise. But I'll never forget their terror, the power I had just as a child. If I had let slip all my father told me, who knows, late at night, the knock on the door, arrest by the Gestapo. We were encouraged in our Hitler Youth meetings to tell tales if we ever heard grown-ups talk against Hitler, against the regime. And there were children so passionately Nazi, they turned in their own parents. How can you explain that? Only that Hitler grabbed us so young, and he never let go. 